Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips and welcome back Ben from Intel. Thank you very much. So today's episode is about ultrabooks, which are basically notebooks that are so large that you could probably kill a man with them. Linus, that is not an ultrabook. <laughs> Okay, so to be clear, it's not a heavy notebook to be used as a bludgeoning instrument. It's a thin and light. So then any thin and light is an ultrabook. No, ultrabook is a lot more than that. Just because it's thin and light doesn't make it an ultrabook. It has to be, an ultrabook has to be responsive, it has to be secure, and it has to have high performance as well. And it has to be thin and light. And it has to be thin and light. All right, Ben, let's talk frankly for a moment. When I think performance PC, Usually this is what I'm talking about. This is ultra to me. So why don't you explain what's ultra about an ultra book? Yeah, absolutely. In the past, we'll have packed a lot of performance in such a small form factor. It was really tough, right? Okay. We've got technologies now in here so that we can, for instance, pack at least a core process in here. It could be Core i3, 5, or 7. Okay. Makes it a fast system. Uh, second of all is something called rapid start technology. So the system was on, put it to sleep. Okay. Um, How do you achieve that? Uh, well, we achieve that by uh, either things like SSD caching or a full SSD. That's part of the requirements. In fact, it has to wake up in less than seven seconds. You guys saw when I pressed the button, right? That was a lot less than seven seconds. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, and then you also have to have uh, connectivity as well. That would be Wi-Fi as okay. a minimum requirement. Yep. And then it's either USB 3.0 or Thunderbolt. So it has to have some kind of extremely high performance external connection. Absolutely. Now, when I first went off to university, I invested in a notebook that was, it was kind of small, but it was thick, and it had, uh, I bought this extended battery that stuck out the bottom like this, and I got about six hours of battery life. I was thrilled with that. So I learned, though, portability is fantastic, but without battery life, it's kind of pointless. So what's Intel's requirement for battery life? Yeah, in the form factor, in this very thin profile, at least five hours of wireless use. Okay. Uh, However, we saw your seven second boot up time requirement, what are you yeah. actually seeing? Uh, a lot of our partners, uh, we see seven, eight, nine hours and even beyond. Okay, so cool story, bro. It's small and light, I can carry it around. It's got a great battery life, I can use it all day. However, I think all of our viewers know that anything that's small and light, you carry it around all day, you use it everywhere, the risk of losing it goes like this. So how am I protected with a device like this? Yes, every Ultrabook is required to have security built in. Okay. Identity protection technology keeps you safe while you're online, and anti-theft technology is a technology to lock, track, and trace your Ultrabook in case it's ever lost or stolen. Okay, and is this something you'd be willing to come back and join us on NCIX Tech Absolutely. Tips? Talk about more? Okay, good stuff. Okay, so Intel's doing the certification process. Mm -hmm. Lots of the big guys do certification processes, like NVIDIA with the way it's meant to be played or 3D Vision certified or whatever else. My understanding is there's usually a licensing fee associated, but Intel's not taking any money for the Ultrabook name. So what's in it for Intel? Yeah, we really want to deliver on a user experience, right? Fast, responsive, and secure. At the same time, we still want to provide choice. You're going to see a lot of designs uh, out in the market now or coming out very soon. Convertibles, clamshells, swivels, tablets, um, a lot of different options, but still delivering on all the brand prompts. Now we have something sort of secret here today. This is a reference design. This is not something you can actually buy, but this is an Ultrabook running Windows 8 with a touch screen that still maintains that Ultrabook required thin and light form factor, which is very cool stuff. So the last thing then is with so much variety, how do you actually identify an Ultrabook as a shopper? Yeah, very simple. Look for the Ultrabook name. It can't be an Ultrabook unless it's called an Ultrabook. So no one's allowed to use Ultrabook unless Intel signed off on it. That's correct. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. And uh, I hope you'll welcome back Ben for those future episodes we promised about the security features that come along with that Ultrabook name.